Hey students, here is the Earth History Investigation 1 Week 2 Grand Canyon Rocks Notebook. If you want to check your bracket, you should do that, or uh, watch any of the road recaps, they're right here. So we're going to continue studying Earth's history, and really we're doing this last learning target down here. We can use the acid test and other observations to tell the difference between limestone, sandstone, and shale. I guess we're also working on this, explaining why there are horizontal stripes on the walls of the Grand Canyon and how they relate to sedimentary rock layers. So, yeah. Let's look at this big, beautiful picture of the canyon. Here you're gonna type three questions. So the Grand Canyon is a site that is famous for its geology. It's considered one of the seven wonders of the natural world. Over 4.5 million people visit it every year. And so looking at the picture, thinking about if you were a geologist, what questions would you ask about this place that you would maybe want to study or research further and filling in three questions? There's two videos here. The first one has no audio, it's just music and really cool helicopter footage flying over the canyon. The second video has a ton of information and it's the CGI that gives you a lot of information about the canyon. So these are good videos to watch to learn a little bit more. And then here you're gonna make a prediction. Why do there appear to be stripes on the walls of the Grand Canyon? If you don't know what it's talking about, look at this picture again. Why do there appear to be stripes here on the walls of the Grand Canyon? So make a guess. It might sound something like there appear to be stripes because. In class together, we did a bunch of these observations and then if you were a distance only person, you finish on your own. And then the second class time we met as a whole group, we worked on this. So just to give you a sample, you're gonna watch these videos and you should fill in these rock numbers so that you can record observations about them. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. This row is actually extra. So you can just delete it if it shows up on your doc. And now I'm going to click on here and I'm going to record observations about the rocks I see. So those, these are from mile 20 and mile 52 at the Colorado River. Oops. We're going to compare rocks from two different sites along the Colorado River and record our observations about them. So the first rock would be rock six. I'm going to take a screenshot of it so I can insert the picture on my dock. So if you control shift and then you hit the windows button, it looks like card playing cards in your Chromebook. Control shift windows. Then you can take a screenshot and then it can give you the option to copy to your clipboard. You should copy to your clipboard, say yes, please. And then you can, on this dock, um, you can just control V and it will paste that picture. I'm not on my Chromebook right now, so I have to go the long way and go to my recents. So it'll look like this. Color, reddish, pinkish. Texture, rough and sandy. Looks very sandy to me. Observations from photos. Um, it has very smooth sides. Um, 
most cube like. And I, I didn't do the acid test yet, but when I'm ready, I will watch this video and I will see if it fizzes in acid. And spoiler alert, it does not. And then to figure out rock type, I'm actually going to use a link here. And I'll stick it here for you guys. If you haven't opened your notebook yet, now you can just click on that link or just go down here and click on this. It gives you all the sedimentary rocks that you might choose from. This one is sandstone. Okay, so now you can just go back to the video and watch number seven. Eventually you're gonna watch all the rocks from mile 20 and then it's going to say, hey, let's look at some rocks from mile 52, which is really just just down the river. And we're basically comparing rocks at two different locations of the Grand Canyon in order to learn more about the Grand Canyon and study why do there appear to be stripes. It's got to do with the rocks, right? So we're studying the rocks to try to um, understand the past. And so you'll look and see, okay. Here's a bunch of rocks from mile 52. This looks really similar to mile 20. And if you think it looks like perfectly the same, I'll show you what I would do. So for mile 52, you're gonna be looking at four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. But look, I noticed that there's a layer six and it looks just like this. So I'm just going to be like, okay, it's the same. And I'm going to paste it. And I'm going to also cheat and paste this whole thing too. So I don't have to do it twice. Oops. Like that. Okie dokie. So you'll fill in the rest of these on your own by watching these videos. And remember to use this link and this link. The acid test is another video. It's going to show you if each rock fizzes when you put acid on it. And the reason that it's showing you that is because there's certain rocks that contain a chemical called calcium carbonate. And you can think about it like they contain carbon. And when you put acid on these rocks, you can see that the carbon is reacting and sort of just it's sort of breaking the bonds that it had in the rock and you'll see it looks carbonated in acid and you'll see lots of little tiny bubbles just like a soda so that's what you'll watch when you watch the acid test video but why why is it important why do we care if a rock has carbon in it because if it reacts to acid we know it's limestone and we're trying to understand the story of the Grand Canyon. So we need to figure out what these rocks are that come from all the different layers. And limestone is one of them. And so if you see that a rock reacts with acid, you'll say it's limestone. If it looks like it contains sand, you'll probably say it's sandstone. And if it looks like this and it's very dark gray, you'll probably say it's shale. Uh, these other rocks, they don't show up in our samples. So you're not going to have any conglomerate, breccia, or coal. So really, you're just trying to figure out which rocks are sandstone, which ones are shale, and which ones are limestone. Okay. So once you're done, this will be all filled out. And then your final step is going to be to figure out, okay, well, I'm going to look at a, a map of the actual locations. What do these rock layers look like? And, and where are these layers located? So for mile 20, I see layer 10 is way at the top and nine and eight. So that's, these are the rock layers that we're looking at in the videos as well. And then for mile 52, I see nine is way at the top. 
and then it goes 8765. And a little closer, sorry, is 65, and then 54, and then 54. So pay attention to this numbering. And you're going to fill in the numbers here. There's a little typo here, actually, one of the boxes got deleted. So if you copy and paste one, control C, control V, you can get a new one. And split it like right there. So if you need to look back at those real pictures, you can. Um, I have it here. My tab. Oh, that one's 50, 52 that I clicked on. So I'm kind of going out of order here. But that little top layer that I was just adding the box for it, that would be layer 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. So I'd go back here and I'd say nine, eight, seven, six, five. And then here would be six, five, five, four, five, four. Save and close, and then you can look at mile 20 and do the same thing. I've got to look at mile 20 again to remember. It is this. So here in the distance, it goes 10, 9, 8. And then up close, it goes nine, eight, seven, six, five. Or no, it just goes down to six. So I'd fill that in. And then see the close. And that's the whole notebook for the week. The main bulk of the work comes from looking at all these rocks and recording observations about them. And then figuring out, okay, do they fizz an acid? Well, if they do, it's limestone. If they don't, it's probably either sandstone or shale. And so filling that in. Okay, do your best on this. Down here, look, there are a lot of repeats. Look, six. It's going to be really similar to this six. So if you're running out of time, just copy your observations from up here. Whatever you got for seven. Okay, I'm just going to copy it and stick it down here because the rocks are, are basically the same. They're only 30 miles apart along the river. They look the same. They are the same, most likely. These layers are really big and they stretch for more than 30 miles, which makes sense. Okay, once you're done, submit on Schoology. Email me if you have any questions. And that's it. Have a great weekend.